All right, welcome to grade eights. We're gonna be talking about uh, multiplying and dividing integers today. Some of you saw a pre-quiz and went, wait, we don't know dividing integers yet, uh, but we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna to start with multiplying and some basic rules. So we're gonna start with some of our integer tiles and it's gonna start very easy for you. It's kind of a, yeah, no kidding. And then it's gonna get a little more complicated because we're going to use various models to do this. So first, I'm gonna start with something rather easy. Do we all know this answer? Just call it out. It's positive, right? you got it. I know three times three is nine. I know a positive times a positive. So let's throw this down in our tiles. Don, are you on camera? Can you quiet, please? Got three. Got three. Got three. Does that look good? Three groups of three? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's change it then. Closet 12. We're good? All right, let's take a look at that. Let's look at the board. I got positive 4 times positive 3. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, let's change it then. Commutative. The commutative property states that it doesn't matter backwards or forwards. Did you see I switched the numbers? Instead of 4 times 3, we now have 3 times 4. Is it reasonable to say that I have 4 groups of 3? Or 3 groups of 4 there? Does it matter? Does it matter if I put the 3 times the 4 or the 4 times the 3? No. no, it does not matter. That is called the commutative property. You can swap them, doesn't matter, doesn't change a thing. So let's take a look at some of the examples in the textbook. Today we're looking at 2.2, .2, and that's some of that multiplying integers. 2.1 introduced you to the concept, so this one's going to be pretty easy. This week you're going to be doing 2.2 .2 and 2.3. 2.3 gets into dividing. But first I want to show you a couple of... Hi, Jason there, please. Yes, he is. Can he come down here? He's please? on his way. Thank you. But what we're going to look at is a couple of models. Now, we already did. We modeled this way. But then look what they did here. Positive 3 times positive 5, 15. What is being modeled here? being modeled here. It's a negative 50. So take a look at the board. That could be oh there we go. <laughs> Can you aim, aim that at the board? There we go. That could be positive three times negative five. Three groups of negative five. Group one, group two, group three. Or it could be, I did 15 again, look at that. Does that make sense? Negative five groups of positive three. What if I did it this way? Is it changing at all? Does it change at all? So I want you to look at those four. Can you see the four on camera? Do they change at all? I would argue that this model shows all four of these. And let's take a look at why. If I multiply a positive and a negative, what's my sign? Positive or negative? negative? It's going to be a negative. And what's 3 times 5? Positive or negative times a positive? Negative 
positive times a negative. Negative, negative, negative times negative. positive. That's the same question. That is the commutative property. In multiplication, it doesn't matter if you swap it left or right. But we also know that a positive times a positive equals a positive, a positive times a negative equals a negative, a negative times a positive equals a negative, and a negative times a negative? Negative. Positive. Here's your sign. Same, same. If the two signs are same, same, it's positive. They're different, negative, it's going down. So you just gotta think, if it's same, same, it's going up. Same, same, going up. Same, same, going up. Different, going down. Different, it's going down. But the commutative property will show. I can flip the three and the five all I want. I can flip the positive and the negative all I want. It's still going to come up to the same answer. Now I just have to find my mouse so that we can scroll down. Let's take a look at another example. I won't get in too deep with this because we've covered it, but if you look in your textbook, it'll show you once again how we can model. And we just did that on my desk. And it also shows the commutative property here. There's that word commutative, where it doesn't matter if you look at it as four groups of three or three groups of four. That's the one that we just did on my desk. What time are we at in our video here? Uh, six minutes. Okay, thank you. Now there's something else called the distributive property. And this might be a little hard to see on your video. So if it's hard to see on your video, it's in your textbook on page 71, or you can download the PDF right off of Edsby. So this is where you can just pause your video and download the PDF on your phone. If you don't have internet because you're at the farmhouse, just say, yo mom, can I borrow your phone? I gotta download my assignment. No mom ever said, no, you can't do your math homework. So trust me on that. Take a look at this one. 3 times 4 plus 5. So this person chooses to rewrite it. 3 times 4, 3 times 4, plus 3 times 5. Do you remember when you were a little kid and you were drawing those little lines for it? You draw the line 3 times 4 and 3 times 5. We're just doing that same thing again. Well, here we have the three groups of 4 and the three groups of 5, and we add them all together. So this is a, a secondary model. I don't use this model personally. It is in the book, it's available for you. So I won't harp on it for too long. But that's the distributive property where it, you can distribute it amongst all of them. Does it matter if I have the four plus five or the five plus four? Does it matter if I put four plus five times three? Could I put times three on the other side? Yes. I could, I could. That's the commutative property. Find each product. Can you look up here again? Positive plus positive is what? Positive. Positive. Same, same. Good. Negative plus a neg negative equals? Positive. It's same, same. It's good. Positive, negative, negative, positive. It's different. Different goes down. It's a negative. So let's take a look. What's 9 times 4? Just 9 times 4. Call it up. 36. Is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. 4 times 9? 37. 37? 36. 36. Positive. Wait, we switched the 9 and the 4 and the 4 and the 9. Did it matter? It did. But look at that. We did change our signs. It's going to be positive. It's same, same. Negative times negative. So it goes up. 4 times 9, 36. Same, same sign. Goes up. 4 times 9, 36. Same, same sign. Plus, plus goes up. Uh, you've got it. It's pretty easy when you think of it that way, isn't it? Now we're doing one thing. Yeah, so probably by now you're going, uh, I think I've got, I mean, who right now is like, yeah, I think I've got this. I think I can do the, yeah. All right. You're going to blow through this assignment. No problem. Okay. Um, Edsby's not letting me put notes on to tell you which numbers uh, right now. So I'll tell you that once the video is finished. You will also be getting into uh, dividing fractions, but I think we've done enough today and I want to get you started on your assignment. We'll do that as a separate video uh, probably tomorrow. And for those of you in the milk run, you can watch that video uh, from home if you want when you get home tomorrow. All right, pause the video. I'll see you guys in class.